working on a large Stuart model steam plant, part 12, making an interesting gas fitting and painting the baseboard satin black. Historically, most small gas-fired boilers use one of these. It's a small, self-contained gas tank, the idea being that you fill the tank almost to the top with liquid gas and then connect it to the burner. This type of tank used to be manufactured by a company called Cheddar Models and they became very popular. The original Cheddar Models company, which is now part of Stuart Models, made quite a good range of miniature steam plants for use in model boats. However, this small gas tank is inadequate for the Stuart HB6 boiler, so I'm going to modify it slightly. The main problem is it doesn't hold that much gas and it chills very quickly, the pressure drops and the boiler raises steam poorly. I'm going to make it so I can connect an external gas tank to this gas tank. And for this, oddly enough, I'm using a Cheddar Models elbow. I think it came off a Cheddar Puffin engine that I used to have. I've applied some Loctite 542 to the threads and here I'm tightening it in place using my Barco spanner. I used to wonder what the point was of having a second gas outlet on a small gas tank like this. I've seen the second outlet used with a special valve with a pipe on the bottom going down into the liquid gas to feed liquid gas to a special burner, but for health and safety reasons I can't really go into that. I get frequent comments from viewers telling me how to stop the gas from chilling in a gas tank, which normally involves heating the tank. But for health and safety reasons, I really cannot illustrate these methods in my videos. Particularly taking the liquid gas around a burner head, that's a good idea until it goes wrong and then you build yourself a flamethrower. And I don't wish in any way to show anyone how to self-cremate or spontaneously combust with the help of a small gas tank. So I think I'll just leave it there. I've got a piece of hexagon brass in the chuck and I'm turning the end to a nice round shape so when I press the pipe on there's no chance of the metal nicking the pipe. When using gas systems on miniature steam boilers it's essential to make sure that there are no leaks whatsoever. The gas that I normally use is a mixture of propane and butane. So why am I modifying the gas tank? The reason for doing this is twofold. The first reason is it means I can connect a larger gas canister to the steam plant without having to interfere with the very small pipe that connects to the burner jet. And the second reason is, just in case the main gas canister gets knocked over and liquid gas comes down the pipe, this gas tank connected to the burner pipe will act as a reservoir so there won't be a massive flame out of the chimney. I haven't put this to the test so the best thing to do is to make sure that the gas canister cannot be knocked over. At the moment I'm drilling a hole down the centre of this piece of brass and the deeper that the drill bit goes into the hole the more frequently I'm needing to withdraw it and brush off all the swarf before starting again. When drilling any kind of metal if the drill starts to make a funny noise it's probably a good idea to withdraw it and clear the drill flutes of any swarf before you can start again. So now I've created a brass tube with a hole down the centre and a hexagon part at one end, which I'm now parting off from the main stock. If this part was made from steel, I would slow down the rotational speed of the chuck and use plenty of lubricant. But with a piece of brass it's generally okay, providing the tool is sharp to part off at the same speed that you would turn it. First of all I'm facing across the front, and then as usual I'll use a centre drill, which is a very rigid, short, stubby drill bit, that tends not to move about like a normal twist drill. Did you hear that noise? I have a problem with my lathe. I'm seriously thinking about buying a new one. I don't know if it's the lathe motor taking too much current or whether it's the three-phase converter. I'm going to look into it. This lathe, when it's working, is still OK. It's very old, though. But I am seriously thinking about buying another one. I could also do with a lathe that's a little bit bigger than this one. I'll see how I go. I phoned Transwave, the company who make the three-phase converter, and spoke to a man called Pete Moss, who was incredibly helpful. It really makes a change. Thanks, Pete. No power problem here, though. I'm threading the part by hand. The normal standard in the world of model steam locomotives is 40 threads per inch, an ME thread, which is very popular. But Cheddar models always use 32 threads per inch, so I've just threaded this part 32 threads per inch, to screw onto the Cheddar model's elbow in the tank. 
This is a large camping gas cylinder. And I'm going to try this with one of these things. This is a regulator. I've never tried one before. This regulator, if it detects too much gas flow, will knock off, which is always a good health and safety thing. It just stops you blowing yourself up in the workshop. Here I'm fitting some thick-walled silicone rubber tubing, first of all to the regulator, and the other end goes to the gas tank. I use this thick-walled silicone rubber tubing frequently in the workshop for steam lines, air lines and gas lines. And as you can see here, pushing the tubing onto this adapter in the tank is a much better idea than threading it onto the thin pipe that goes up to the burner. And now it's time to go into the outer part of the workshop to work on the baseboard. I've drilled some of the holes in the baseboard for mounting the components slightly larger because they were a bit tight on the original installation. I've given the primer a rub down with some wet or dry sandpaper so now it's time to put the first of the top coats on. My choice of paint for this job is HMG Satin Black which is a spray type enamel paint. It's really good stuff and it doesn't dry shiny at all. It's nearly matte but not quite. Obviously as I'm spraying the paint it looks very shiny indeed and this is what it would look like if it was in gloss black. No, I don't think so. I think that satin black from HMG Paints is the way to go. Here's a gratuitous shot of the paint drying. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.